I didn't want to go. I didn't want to have to go be sad on camera. 6.38 a.m. And state fans are lined up, I guess, hoping to get tickets. They're already there. The thing about the College World Series is it's so drawn out. I mean, if you go up there for the start, you're there for two weeks. And so you start, start trying to figure out work schedules. <laughs> Chaos, madness, cowbells, symphonies of just euphoria. That ball is into left field, and Mississippi State walks it off and walks into the College World Series Finals. Those guys could have easily given up on this season, and Chris Lamonis never let that happen. How do you look back on an entire 68-game baseball season? Well, fact is you don't remember all of it, but you do remember the big moments. With a new season about to start, let's take some time to have a close look back, a look back at last year's national championship run. As of yet. That was a good pitch on the outside half. That team last year went 40 and 13 in the regular season. Never lost a midweek game. Went 20 and 10 in SEC play. Coach Lim making all the right moves. You plug a guy in that's got three at bats in the entire season. Here's a 2 0. Line in the right center field. That'll get to the gap. Around and around and around they go. And a base is clearing. For Tanner Allen. Jordan drives it deep right field and drifting back. It is gone. Solo home run, Rowdy Jordan, leadoff variety. Well hit left field. Davis will watch. It is gone over the wall. Two run shot, Logan Tanner. And the postseason began with a trip to the SEC tournament in Hoover and a first round bye and it wasn't pretty. State was 10-run ruled in back-to-back -back games and sent back home quickly. You know, some guys are throwing their aces on Wednesday, some are throwing their you know, down-the-line guys, and how that tournament kind of matches up. Not saying that it doesn't matter, but you just kind of want to come out of there healthy with a little bit of confidence. I think the thing that bothered me more about Hoover is you were run-ruled in two games, and so you didn't play well at all. And so you kind of wonder, does that kind of go toward the next week in the NCAA tournament? When you look back historically, there have been a lot of teams go two and done in the SEC tournament and then go on and do really well. We saw that with the South Carolina teams in 2010-11. That being said, as much as I didn't place a value on the SEC tournament, I was a little bit worried about how poorly we played. Not that we lost, but that it didn't look like we were playing our best baseball. And so, admittedly, I was a little bit concerned. Now the thing you do know coming out of that is, is you're playing at home, and this place is kind of going to will you to win a little bit. Now State was already hosting a regional regardless of Hoover, and so it was back to get ready for that. Samford, VCU, and Campbell into town. State swept right through, one, two, three, all three of those, and punched their ticket to a super regional. Ground ball to short, Forsyth. Mississippi State survives. Six to five, the final score, and the Bulldogs will welcome Notre Dame to Starkville next weekend. Hosting Notre Dame, two wins from another trip to Omaha. Tanner behind home plate. Called strike three. Base hit right side. They're going to send Jordan. Here's the throw. It's cut off by Cavadas, and we're tied at one. State won the first game of the Super 9 to 8. Touches that one pretty well. Deep to center field. And the streak has started. And then got whipped 9 to 1 in game two, setting up the rubber match. Winner moves on to Omaha. Loser season is done. It's a little bit early looking for it. Now two straight sliders, and that could end it. This might be it. It is. The Bulldogs have done it.
They are heading to Omaha for the Notre Dame comes out that first game and they take that big lead. They're ahead seven to four. It's the middle of the inning, middle innings. And you're like, hey, this is a team that has had to come from behind this year. And you know if you can put together a couple of good at bats. And then, you know, you're leaving the ballpark that night. We had one nine to eight. And you're like, man, tonight was one of those nights we probably got away with one. If you look at that Notre Dame series, and it kind of looks back at that you know, persona this team took on early in the year, of when they get down, they answered. And that was, you know, Notre Dame jumps out early. They hit the home run in the first inning. We come right back and score runs. And it was just, you know, back and forth. And this was not the team that kept on digging a hole. It was almost like when we need a good at bat, and it may have been a walk. It may have been a single. It may have been a leadoff guy getting on base. It just, fit. this team figured out ways to come from behind. Now that we're on the, this side of his, the history, to look back and go, oh, I knew it was coming, I knew something was different, whatever, it's easy. But genuinely, did you know? No, I, in fact, I dreaded the trip. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go because I was going to have to do content. I was going to be on camera. I was going to have to react good or bad. I didn't want to have to go be sad on camera. I, I just, I, I don't like that. I don't enjoy it. Uh, football season has given me more of that than I can stand over recent years. But so Mississippi State isn't like a lot of other schools that you haven't won a national title in 50, 60, 70 or 80 years. First of all, we'd never won it. But second, we have been close in the last decade three times. 2013 baseball and then women's basketball did everything but women win a national championship. And we thought we had it. And so last year when we were playing for another one, I was like, oh, I just don't want to go get close again without getting there. In sports, coaches, players, we are trained to never get too up or too down. You, you didn't quite, you didn't get that, did you? I, um, those lessons didn't get through to me. <laughs> <laughs> those, those, in sports, you, you should be even keel. You shouldn't ride an emotional roller coaster. The Brandon Walker Mississippi State experience is one of extreme highs and extreme lows. We know where it ended up, but there was a lot of existential dread within me the whole time. Okay, and I thought I remembered that, but you went at the beginning of the tournament, correct? I went, yeah, when they when they made the, the College World Series, Barstool made the decision, we're sending y'all out there, we're gonna send you because your team's in it. I said, okay. They said, stay until your team's out of it. And I said, all right. And um, spent two weeks in Omaha. Everywhere I went, the restaurants I went to, the shops that I went to, all the local folks were saying, wow, y'all travel so well. How many of you came? I can't believe you have such a great number. Uh, your fans are so much nicer than the LSU fans that normally show up. First up in Omaha were the Texas Longhorns and their ace, first rounder, Ty Madden. Lamonis countered with Will Bednar. On a 3-2, got him. 94, and he strikes him out. Yeah, looking back at that game, you kind of felt like whoever blinked first was probably going to lose because we had Will Bednar, they had Ty Madden. But you think back a little bit before, you know, Will Bednar had not thrown that great against Notre Dame. This is on this one right here. It's fastball, not absolutely at the top of the zone, but not too far. I was a little bit worried because I knew how good Texas was. I think that's one of the things that gets lost a little bit as we look back to last year. We think about that three-game series with Vanderbilt. Texas was an outstanding team. Yep. Saw the heater, saw the slider. And Ty Madden, who we had beat early in the year, was playing his best baseball. The thing that I didn't see happening was Will Bednar just played two of the best weeks of baseball that anybody at Mississippi State's ever played. From June 20th to June 30th of 2021, Will Bednar is the greatest Mississippi State baseball player of all time. That is without contestation, that is stone cold fact. What Will Bednar did was incredible. Landon Sims closed the door as usual. State was 1-0 in Omaha. Let's listen to the crowd here and the team come off the bench. Fifteen strikeouts for Bednar, and already he's handing the ball off to his teammate with a strike on the hitter he's facing. Next up was Virginia and pitcher Griff McGarry, who took a no-hitter into the eighth inning. 
Didn't work there as he strikes him out. Hancock, the first K of the night for McGarry. He's got one of those, too. Fastball up to 95 so far. Then he drops a slider on him. And you know what happened. We're down 4 nothing. It's a no-hitter, which was the most fraudulent no-hitter of all time. We had been knocking the crap out of the ball for about three innings before we finally got a hit. Here in the fifth, this ball to left field towards the gap. Tapping going over, and he'll make the play. Got him swinging in a slider in the dirt. They'll throw the first, another strikeout, but Gary fired up there. And then after a Scotty DeBrule walk. Eighth on a 3-2. Oh, it's there. That's down, ball four. Good. Kellum Clark gets up there and barrels one up. And that ball is drilled to right field, and it is deep, and Teal goes back. I actually didn't see it happen. I uh, was really frustrated. I was nervous. I was anxious. And I got in my car and I drove around the outskirts of Starville listening to Jim Ellis. There's a drive to right field and I don't think anybody will catch it. It's in the bullpen. A two run homer for Kellum Clark. He breaks up the no hitter. And I remember that home run and then I started doing the math in my head. Where are we in the order? And I said, if this thing gets back to Tanner Allen, we're going to win this baseball game. He did, and that one is driven to right, and it is deep, and it is gone! Tanner Allen, a three-run home run. Mississippi State, five runs in the inning, and now lead it five to four. Anyway, uh, it's 4-2, then we hit the home run, and that's when Tanner Allen hits the, the, the iconic home run, and I go, I think that's the first time I really got on camera, and from then on, he kept, he kept circling back to me. I did not see either home run. I was in my car, driving around Starkville. Ball is lifted in the air, deep to right, it is gone! And I wasn't gonna break up the momentum I had going, Look, I don't trust a baseball fan who's not a little bit superstitious, and I wasn't breaking that up. There Give it a and that's it. What a weapon landing Sims. What a comeback for Hale State. They get that win over Virginia set up a rematch with Texas. State needed one win to punch its ticket to the finals. Texas needed two. Texas built a lead, and then State, with three runs in the bottom of the eighth inning, was able to tie the ball game. But in the top of the ninth, Texas found the long ball. A three-run shot, forcing a deciding game. It's a three-run home run! Ivan Melendez! We're down 5-2, to two, and we come back, just like we did against Virginia. We come back, we inch back, we fight back, and it's 5-5 five to five in the eighth, and oh my, it's different this time, it's different this time. Where's that ball going? <laughs> Oh my, okay, it's not different this time. It's not different at all. That Texas home run was a, was a spear to the heart. Forcing a do or die match the following day, and again, State turned to Will Bednar. Bednar struck out seven, and in the seventh inning, gave the ball to Landon Sims. The game was tied 3-3, and in the bottom of the ninth, Kellum Clark, hit by a pitch, put a runner on first base. Lamonis elected to pinch run Braylon Skinner, and after a throw over and a pitch, he sent him. Runner goes. Oh! Arduan's throw is high, and he has stolen second base. Braylon Skinner putting pressure on Texas. Backup infielder Tanner Leggett found himself in a position to be the hero. And a 1 1 to Tanner Leggett. That ball is in. Lamonis makes the switch, Braylon Skinner steals the base, and then bam, Leggett hits the ball. And I just, I believe in sports, there are certain aesthetics, right? There, some passes look better than others in football. Some passes look better than others in basketball. That was the prettiest line drive I've ever seen. It was a gorgeous line drive. Like it came off the bat, just curving beautifully. And just and like, I just, I, I didn't even, I didn't even yell or scream. I just, I just raised my hands like, uh, here we go. Leggett in 21. 
This is why I love this sport so much. I was sitting on my couch at home, and I'm sitting on the couch with my 10-year-old son and my wife, and my seven-year-old son is sitting on the side over there, and I'm watching on stat broadcast. I've got it pulled up on my phone, and I see that we win it before it's actually happened on TV. And so as crazy as this sounds, I know this is, this is corny as I'll get out, I just got quiet and I just watched my son. I wanted to see his reaction because I knew, but I just wanted to see how he reacted to it. It was just as good as I thought it would be. The thing that Chris Lamonis does is he makes everybody on this team understand that whatever their role is, it's valuable. And they need to be ready whenever their time comes, whenever that may be. And you take guys who have been in the lineup and out of the lineup and haven't played, take a Braylon Skinner who hadn't played in a while and he gets a big stolen base. You think about Tanner Leggett who had his time at second, his time at third, and then been out of the lineup. Those guys could have easily given up on this season and Chris Lamonis never let that happen. Vandy, if you remember, got a free ride to the finals. They just, they got a pen, a rose on their nose. Hey, you guys are great. Tapped them in a little tushy and said, hey, let's, let's, let's let your pitching be at the maximum. We want lighter to start. You go to the finals and wait for Mississippi State. <laughs> Thank you, NCAA. <laughs> anyway. Going into the finals, I was nervous. You knew they have Jack Leiter, you know they have Kumar Rocker, and you know that to win it, you're gonna to have to beat one of the best pitchers, not just in the country that year, but in the history of college baseball. You knew the first game that they had the best pitcher in college baseball going in, in Leiter, and he was gonna to be tough to handle. We were all a little bit um, pensive about knowing that a certain whistler would be in the building, but that's okay. Uh, so it's um, Saturday night we beat Texas, and Saturday night it's all happy. Then you wake up on Sunday, and here comes Uncle Dredd again. I don't know that I can handle getting this close and losing again. I don't know that I can handle – I would have rather lost in two games than lose to these whistling jackass because you know you got that. You got – you got they got great pitching. They got a great team. They've beaten us two out of three, but – also, we got a little thing going here. You know, we come out early, we hit the home run. Cam James hits a home run, we take the lead early. And that ball is to left and it is drilled. And it is gone, what a start for State. Cameron James, 12th. And the 14th home run allowed by Leiter this year. It's one nothing dogs. And then they build out leads. And so I think one of the biggest things that people don't look back to is, one of the best things that ever happened to us was get blown out in game one. We didn't burn through a lot of guys that we had relied a lot on all year. And that's not taking away anything from the guys that pitched in that game. But it allowed you to kind of hold back. After a comfortable win for Vandy in game one, State faced elimination in game two. They couldn't pitch Will Bednar on just two days rest. So Scott Foxhall went with lefty, the veteran, Houston Harding. Right down the middle, strike three. Good start for Harding and listen to the place. I don't know if Thanos was wearing maroon. I don't know if there was somebody with a light switch, but it went from, I I'm scared we're gonna get close and not make it to, I mean, it's just a matter of time. This is the better team. It was as thorough a decisive victory as I have ever seen. Not just, not just game two, but game two and game three was these two teams really, for whatever reason, don't belong on the same field right now. 2-2 two -two to Dominic Keegan. Got him swinging, here we go. He's off and running, and that ball is ripped into the corner, it will go. Thomas fields it. James is waved. He is in, it's one nothing State. It was just ground ball, line drive, ground ball, line drive, ground ball, line drive. And Vandy was making mistakes, and they were nervous, and we were just, that, you know, that's my shooting hand. We were just uh, cool as the other side of the pillow. Yeah. Do you think the crowd had an effect? I, I don't know how it couldn't have. I mean, Vandy is a great program, one of the best baseball programs. They built something incredible, and they're used to playing in front of 2,500 people who are whistling idiots, and they're having fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you have the entire state of Mississippi in Maroon telling you that you're not going to win tonight. I, it's going to start getting old. And plus it was a Maroon tidal wave. Like it, if they were in a two to one game, maybe 
maybe it isn't as, as bad, but when it gets to five nothing, six nothing, and people are going crazy, how do you fight back from that? Thanks to Walks. This one back up the middle. And James in. Hancock is waved in. And a good piece of hitting and another top break for Vanderbilt. Baseball no for any sport. And this should do it on the ground. That will do it. And a dominating performance from Mississippi State. They win it 13-2 and set up a game three. State's win in game two of the finals set up the matchup. And going into that final game, I actually spent the day walking around Omaha by myself, staying away from everybody. And I kept having the thought, if Mississippi State's going to win this game, Will Bednar has to be better on three days rest than Kumar Rocker is on four. Hey, anything can happen late in the year. That's why Coastal Carolina won a national championship. That's why Fresno State won a national championship. It just, everything has to fall in place for you at the end of the season. You get inside the stadium, you watch BP, you do all this. Somebody sings a national anthem, right? There's, there's all this. And I, we need something to happen early in this game to calm my nerves. The very first pitch of the game goes boop, hard right, right to right field. Rowdy Jordan took the lid off immediately, and there was never any sense of dread. It couldn't get in because Rowdy Jordan didn't let it in. And Rocker, that's a great start for Rowdy Jordan. One pitch, one hit, fastball into right field. We got one on, one out, and there's a ground ball back to Rocker. Great. And then he throws it away again. Every time just a centimeter of an opening happened, it just, it became a crater because of the state fans and the state team, which was relentless. Nasty slider, he swings and he is tagged out by Logan Tanner. Good call, Eddie. He brought that pitcher right back into it on a 2-0 swing. 3-2 on the ground, a short fielded Forsyth. DeBrule, double play. This ball is poked to left field off the bat of Logan Tanner. It's gone, Logan Tanner, home run. Mississippi State adds another. Kellen Clark's home run in, against Vanderbilt in game three is my favorite Mississippi State sporting moment I've ever experienced live. When you're up 3 nothing, you feel good. When you're up 5 nothing, you feel really good. When you're up 6 nothing, you feel pretty good. But when you're up 9 to nothing. When Kellum Clark hits that ball, which I know it landed about 10 rows back, to me it landed on the moon. When I saw that ball get off his bat, it was immediate. It wasn't, yay, he hit a home run. It was, we just won the national championship. This ball is to right center field and deep. Bradfield going back, looking up. See you later. Three run home run from Kellum Clark and it's a blow. You're doing the math, you're doing everything, you're, you're worried, you're worried, you're worried, who's this, who's that? There goes that ball, and it's it just won you a national championship. And that's the moment, because the ovation he got was the home run ovation. It's the, oh my God, look at that ball. But the ovation didn't die, it stayed. It stayed because 24,000 people realized the moment they had wanted, they had chased, they had dreamed of, was here, and we were watching it. and. I don't know that we got a hit. I think we got one more hit after Kellen Clark. It didn't matter. Nobody stopped smiling. Nobody stopped standing. Nobody stopped hugging. The second Kellen Clark hits that ball, we have won the national title. The only comparable experience I ever had was when Mississippi State won in Lexington in 1996 to go to the Final Four. And we was in Rupp Arena, and I remember we had gone out to the concourse, and nobody really wanted to leave because they knew that once they left, this moment was over and that we weren't going to recapture it. And there was a lot of that after winning in Omaha. Well, I was sitting in the stands, uh, first base side, you know, section 105, 
and I'm one off the aisle. I've got Sims with me to my left. I got Wells and Jen to my right. And, and so to be able to spend it with them, because there's a lot of you know, little league games that I've missed. There's, there's a lot of things that I've missed of, of my families, but to get there and to, and to enjoy it with them, it, it really meant a lot. Chaos, madness, cowbells, symphonies of just euphoria throughout the entire lobby. We, athletics gave me a, a, a stack of posters to give to fans and I couldn't, there weren't enough. I didn't want to leave downtown Omaha after the game. I wanted to stay up all night because you've kind of waited your whole life for something like this. And once it came, just the genuine emotion, the outpouring of excitement, and the number of people who just wanted to get on the phone and call their mom, call their dad, call their brother, and to kind of share that moment together is, is something I'll never forget. With a new season, a new team, we know this, there will be ups, there will be some downs, and as hard as it is to go win one championship, it might even be more difficult to win back to back. But you just never know.